Hi, I'm Peter from Microgreen Solar. I've been with them for four years. We're offered specialists and we've done off-grid for years. We originally sold parts or pieces of the off-grid to people, which was messy, which was cumbersome, but it allowed at least people to put the parts together. We then incorporate that into a starter kit and we sold people plywood board and they put the starter kit on the wall and they would use the starter kit as their off-grid system and they would connect panels and connect batteries to it. And it, it did its purpose, but it was messy. It was easy to tamper with, but it was still faster than the old put pieces on yourself. We thought there had to be a better way because it was messy. It was, it was cleaner giving them a board, but it, wasn't, it was still not clean enough. So the better way was to put it all into a box. Um, so we took the starter kit, all the pieces of the off-grid, and we put it into a box. Um, we added parts to it as well, so we made it legal to the current electrical code. And those pieces are sort of like an inverter, a controller, uh, a meter for the controller, a meter for the AC to show you what load you're using. Um, it, it also had inputs and breakers accordingly, so you had DC on this side and AC on the bottom side to show you what you had and what you're using and, and accordingly kept them from each other because AC and DC don't mix. Um, for co cabins and cottages, it had two um, receptacles. The receptacles allowed you with, with a breaker, so you again, you could use that as your initial power, or you could use an electrical panel for a bigger cottage slash house where you actually had receptacles and, and switches wired, and a power pack is what we have now is, is version three. It took us about a year and a half to put it all together into one box, including the switches, the breakers, the meters, all of the parts that were required to make it a better way for people to have solar under cottage. Because there's really three components to that, we'll show you what they are. This is a, an example of one solar panel. We give you four with a kit. Um, they join together in a series parallel, which is series is joined together or parallel is whether positive and positive and negative and negative are joined. They eventually end up in two wires, which are MC4 cables that connect to the power pack. So the panels connect to the power pack that simply, that just snap and connect. The battery comes with negative and positive, goes down to the batteries down below. You connect two 12s or four sixes or two volts if you want, depending on how many amperage, together to give you 24 volts. And we have 24 volts. We bring 24 volts up to our power pack and we have now a connected working system. Even if this wasn't here, the batteries would still operate the power pack and it would still give you AC. Only this is really used for charging the batteries. So in the beginning, just connecting the batteries in the power pack, you can have power at your cottage until it runs out. Until, and depending on the batteries, it could be a, two or a day or two or three. So in the beginning, when you're building your cottage, why have a noisy generator? Why pay gasoline? You're gonna have off-grid anyway, so you might as well have it right in the beginning, and you can use it right from the beginning, from the get-go. But as soon as you connect the solar, you now have a charge in the batteries full every day as you're using it. It comes 120, 220 split, four kilowatt for the average cottage. There's also um, three versions of power pack. Um, we, once we got this all into a box and realized the 4K was the average size cottage, we led us to create a sort of a mini, a compact and a grand. The mini was a 12 volt for cabins, for RVs, for boats, for tiny homes. It was, you can, you can get DC 12 volt objects and it would hook up nicely to the mini system. Same power pack. Compact was a four kilowatt system, 20 volt volts. The higher the voltage, the wattage, the higher the voltage has to be. So you go 24 volts to get four kilowatts. But now you could run what most houses or cottages have. And then it's a deep well pump or you know, that's a, that, that's a fridge or whatever you want to, a fan, lights, it would run off of the compact. The power pack is a nice product because it can be used also as a backup as well as an off-grid system. So you could use it uh, as a system to back up your house if the power goes down, or you can use it to, with solar to charge 
your batteries from an off-grid system. So either way, the power pack will work as a backup or an off-grid system. The power pack is the inverter, the controller, the breakers, the switches, the meters, all into one. So that when there's hangs in the wall, all you have to do is go to the power pack and all of the answers for what you're doing are here. So you have a DC tells you what your DC in and your batteries. AC tells you what your AC is that you're using. So you can very quickly see if you're using too much, then you're taxing the batteries, you add more batteries. Or if your batteries aren't getting full enough, you add more panels and then your batteries are full enough. So depending on how you would use the power pack, because you could maybe four come with a kit, but you could use eight because you have a cottage that's a little bit more like a house. So therefore you have more panels or you, you use a lot um, in how appliances are hooked up or you have many people at your house. So a cottage is you have eight batteries instead of four batteries because that way you'll last longer during the day and you are charging accordingly with your panels. So depending on how you use the power pack or use the appliances that you have in your house determines the size of the power pack. For example, this can be turned on, that can be turned off and you can have certain parts of your house um, backed up or you can have it actually hooked up to those things that are always running through this and when the power goes out it just takes over and keeps those things running. So it can be used to back up as well as an off-grid system or whatever you want. So it has multi-uses even though it just says power pack but it has multiple functions to it. It does have a 120-220 split which feeds an electrical panel of any type but at the same time we have two Pan, um, receptacles, line one, line two, that are working accordingly. So you have 2,000 watts on each side and you can hook up a device. So when you actually have the power pack ready, you turn the switch to on and you, your DC will show you what your batteries are and what the DC panels are coming in. And the AC will show you what your AC is used in load. So for example, right now we have 220 volts. We turn this, it shows 815 watts of power is used, being used at the moment from this heat gun. Or we can go to 1500 watts and it'll show 14.4. So depending on what your load is, at least you can quickly see that you're matching the batteries what you designed into it. Because people will tell you the load they think they are going to use, but it isn't always the same as what they envisioned. So this will tell you then what they're really using and then we'll know whether the batteries are enough. Like instead of less than 12, you know, 24 hours, less than 12 hours, well then we have to either increase the batteries or we have to increase the, the panels. Okay. Once the power pack is connected to the panels and to the batteries, we have safeties built in, which are um, breakers and switches as per electrical code to tell you to turn them on after the fact. It's an installation guide. Um, so we turn on the breakers first, which tells you that the power pack, that the, connect, the solar is connected to it. We turn on the switch, which that means the battery is now connected to it. And now the power pack is alive from the batteries, but the power pack itself isn't on. So you can see here in the DC side that the DC is hooked up and the battery is hooked up and it's all proper voltage that it should be. So this turns on the DC. So if you want to service the, the batteries, you turn it off and you, now the power pack is off. Now you have power on and power saver mode for the power pack itself. The power pack has a load. It does draw from the batteries as it sits idle. If it's going to be idle all night long, then you go to power saver mode and the power saver mode uses half the power and only it looks for loads. And if the fridge comes on, it goes on, it turns up, it turns off again when the fridge goes off. Power saver mode is when the power, it searches for the uses and when it sees it, see, you can see the button power saver mode, it is searching for the object and it's 60 watts or greater. It'll then turn the power pack on and the power pack will stay on as long as it's on and when it goes off, it goes off the power pack with it. That's power saver mode. In power on mode, it's always on and it's always gonna work for you 24 hours a day.
But I can say, if, if you're using it not that much, then why were you wasting that power? So we give you two modes to operate the power pack accordingly. And then the AC meter shows you what your loads are. It shows your voltage or it shows your power and it shows you what you're using comparatively. So you know then if the batteries or pounds are enough once you get to your card and you hook it up compared to what you thought you were using. So customers can use more than they realize. So a house is just going to be more load. So it's going to be more like a 10 kilowatt power pack, 120, 220 split, but it's going to feed more watts depending on your load.